It's Sunday, it's very rainy and we're going to go on a very last minute trip to Rochester and we're going to see Rochester Castle and hopefully show you a little bit of the historic um, town of Rochester as well. However, it's already 12, we've still got to have a bit of lunch, we're going to have eggs, poached eggs on toast. Uh, so quite what time we're going to get there, I'm not sure. So I'm, I'm not holding on much hope for getting parked or seeing anything at all. But if we do, this will become a vlog about Rochester Castle and our day out. Rochester Castle is purportedly haunted by two different ghosts. The first one being a grey lady and she was shot by an arrow in a terrible accident by her jealous lover and she is said to be seen wandering with an arrow still embedded in her chest. And the other one is Charles Dickens. He was a bit peeved because he wanted to be buried here, but he said they buried him at Westminster Abbey. Rude. So we're going to look out for Charles Dickens and the Grey Lady. <laughs> so we're going up into the Norman Tower. It was built in the 1100s. About 100 years later, it came under siege by the infamous King John. Yeah. Ooh, it's gone a bit dark in here. It's definitely dark? gonna be a ghost or two. Lady, Lady Blanche de Warren was the name of the lady that was accidentally killed by her jealous lover. So I reckon she's gonna be in this dark corridor. Let's go and find her. Although I just Wait. said to Dan that her name was Lady Blanche and he said, what, from the Golden Girls? <laughs> <laughs> Blanche Devereux. Phoebe, don't do that. I've oh, never fall. Saying that you would never fall is usually the last thing someone says before they fall. <laughs> I will definitely. <laughs> you knew I was there. I knew you were going to be somewhere. We should do that funny, go and stand at the end and stand oh, looking yeah. serious. Wait, let me take my brightly coloured things off. Right, you ready?
almost at the very top now. That's so, watch the cathedral. We're getting more spectacular the higher up we go. And you can this see. means a sweet shot. We've got one more there. set of steps to go. <laughs> you hope. And then I we'll think be right the at the top. The shop is somewhere near, so let's keep going. It's definitely not at the top of the castle. We're at the top, it's very cold, it's very windy, it's very wet, which is basically the story of every time we've ever visited Rochester Castle, which is a lot. And I should say the reason we are doing this is because Rochester Castle is one of our favourite places to visit and we've just cancelled our English Heritage membership for the time being also, to save a bit of money because of our fuel bills. Also we were supposed to go to Abner but that was um, closed. Up the castle was closed on the Up now is amazing. So we are going to walk down there and that way, and that is Rochester High Street, it's Victorian High Street. We're going to walk all the way down it and we're going to pass two buildings that um, appear or were the inspiration for things in Charles Dickens' novels. So hopefully, I'll be able to film those for you. And if you come left a bit, see the buildings over there, you've got four, one, two, three, four, five V-shaped buildings in the room, the other side of the river. Yeah. That's Chatham Dockyards, where there'll be HMS Victory, yeah. which is also a historic museum place. And the ropery, which is to the right of that, the little back alley roads, is where they film um, part of uh, Call of Midwife. That's true. in the cesspit. Not much more to say about that really is there? It's a big pit where they used to put poo. And now you can drop their litter. Don't touch me. Wasn't it? It's a ghost. Are you impressed with the cesspit? No. Stinks <laughs> No sweet chop here.
I'm standing in the vines, which is this beautiful little park. I like coming here every time we come to Rochester. It's a really peaceful place. And this was on the route of one of Charles Dickens' favourite walks. And it would take him past Restoration House, which is this one here behind me. And this was the inspiration for Miss Havisham's Satis House in the novel Great Expectations, which is one of my favourites. And on the 6th of June, 1870, a few days before Charles Dickens died, he was actually seen here in the vines, leaning against a fence, looking intently at Restoration House. Maybe he was thinking about using it in his unfinished novel that he was writing at the time he died, which is Edwin Drood. So we're going to have a little walk through the vines and back round to the high street. And then I think we're going to find somewhere to have somewhere to have a little drink. raining at last and of course we're on our way home so we've just come we're just coming back up past the castle <laughs> what are you doing? we're just coming up past the castle there it is not in the rain <laughs> and back to the car we're just parked around the other side of the castle by the river and yeah so the rain has stopped just in time for us to go home but we've had a lovely afternoon at, in Rochester. It's such a lovely historic place and it has such a nice What's feel that? to it. That's a seagull. Oh. Why is it a black Actually, it's, it's a turn. It's a turn. Oh, there we go. T-U. T-U or T-E? I don't know. It's a turn. <laughs> turn. Um, oh, no. Yeah, it's got such a nice feel to it, Rochester. It's really, really nice. We had a lovely, I had a nice vanilla chai latte and Dan had a what did you have? A, coffee? a latte. A latte. And Phoebe had a very impressive looking hot chocolate in a nice independent coffee shop. And it's nice to see places like that have survived the pandemic. So in June, they have a Dickens festival, which we've never been to. I don't have to come with you. And in December, they have a Dickensian Christmas event as well. Because Dickens is so kind of... Um, associated with Rochester and the surrounding towns because I think as a young lad he was in Chatham and they moved away and then he later moved back to um, not far from here in near Stroud, Higham, near Strood, which is just near Rochester. Anyway, I'm going to stop pretending I know anything about history and head back to the car. I'm tired. We've just got home. My in focus. I think maybe sometimes it's my eyes that aren't in focus. <laughs> uh, we've just got home. It is just before four o'clock and I am going to start getting stuff ready for dinner, which we're not eating now, but I want to get it all made so all I have to do is heat it up in the oven and I'm going to make my own casserole I've made this quite a few times before and it's all got, always gone down really well but I've always made it vegetarian and this time I'm going to make two versions one vegetarian and one meat version because Lilia bless her is not pescatarian like Dan and Phoebe and she and I don't mind either way really I, I, I'm not vegetarian or pescatarian I must I do still eat meat 
but I don't mind not eating meat. But Lilia, you know, she doesn't have to eat that way just because everyone else does, and we don't eat a lot of meat anyway. So I'm going to do one version with um, meatballs made from, this isn't pork sausages, and one version made just with ordinary Cumberland sausages, and I will tell you what I do to make my super duper casserole. I think it's super duper. You might not. <laughs> but I'm going to show you anyway. And you can't stop me. Actually, you probably can stop me because you could just literally press stop. But try not to. <laughs> one I'm gonna make the meat version and in this one I'm gonna make the veggie version aesthetically my cast iron pot looks better so I'm gonna be showing you the recipe from the meat version perspective but obviously the only difference is that in the meat version I'm using beef stock and meat sausages and in the veggie version I am using vegetarian sausages and vegetable stock. Also with the stock I've added in two tablespoons of uh, vegetarian friendly beef, beef gravy granules just to give it a bit of extra flavour. But other than that they're the same. Lilia's just brought this in. She's been working very hard on a clay mushroom house. She's still got some painting to do. And what she's done is she's used air drying ah! clay. Let to go down. Ah. There we go. She's used air drying clay to make a mushroom house oh, on a glass jar. That is epic, Lilia. You're a green one once I screw it on. No.
had showers. Ooh. She doesn't want to focus on me, it wants to focus on you. It's because I'm the star of the show. I don't blame it, to be honest. We've all had showers, therefore my hair is now up and fluffy. Lilia is not feeling her best because what did we do yesterday? I got my second COVID vaccination. She had her second jab, so she's feeling a bit under the weather, but she's eating some toffee crumble that we brought her back from Rochester, so she's happy. Phoebe is a burrito. She's feeling a bit tired and not very well. So everybody is going to have an early night. You've just finished 100 grams of toffee crumble. There's never enough of it in the world. Do you have any regrets? None. We are watching Ever After High, Ever After High because <gasps> Lilia wanted to feel nostalgic because she used to watch this all the time. Mm. 